I'll come back and check on you in about an hour. Huh? Actually, wait, can you don't go? Can you come back? Can you come back, please? <laughs> Good evening everyone, welcome to Haunting History, where we explore our past, present and the scars that's left behind by Singapore's history. You may have seen me as a host on Supernatural Confessions, I'm Eugene Tae. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm an avid collector of stories and confessions of the supernatural kind. And tonight, I'm excited to share some of these stories with you. With me in the studio is my guest. Hi, I'm Marianne and I'm an early childhood educator. You look like you'd be easily spooked by anything, even a pen falling in an empty room. <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so we're filming this in the middle of seven months. What's your belief of that? So I'm a Catholic. Uh, I don't really believe in this kind of stuff. But I guess when people tell me their stories, I tend to believe them a little bit. I'm sure in your school, as you're growing up, you have heard stories about haunted toilets, haunted chalets, haunted this, haunted that. Have you had any experience yourself? I guess like the vibe, uh, my secondary school, my DNT block is actually haunted. So I'm not wrong, a teacher died there before. Yeah, so I think it was the sawing machine that cut off, I think his or her hair. So they didn't let us go to that DNT building after 7 p.m. I don't know how true it is, but I guess the vibe in school was just very off, you know. There are some places in the school where you can feel like it's just not right. Yeah, but I don't really see, it. I haven't seen any. Thank God, my past four years in school, so... So what would it take for you to believe in the supernatural? I don't know, we shall see. Hmm? I guess we'll see tonight. So do you know where I'm going to bring you today? Fort Canning Park, right? Hmm. <laughs> so today, we're going to take a short break from all things spooky and scary and venture into the more mystical and historical side of Singapore. Venturing to Fort Canning, which is today known for its outdoor events and music festival, but once, it was a seat of power in the 1300s of a very powerful ancient kingdom. And then it was taken over by the British and subsequently the British surrendered Singapore or rather they made the decision to surrender Singapore at Fort Canning to the Japanese and we all know how that turned out for us. Stories and sights and sounds of the British and the Japanese have carried their way from the past to the present and some people have said they are spotted shadows in Fort Canning. Will we see them tonight? Well, join us to find out. Now, we are at Fort Canning. One of the places I love the most, even as a child. It's very peaceful, but also holds a very dark past. So where we are standing in front of right now, this metal door, can you guess where we are? Battle box. Battle box? Yeah. History past. <laughs> this is the battle box, or rather this is the back entrance to the battle box, but inside there's about 20 over rooms. And this is where the British made their decision to surrender Singapore and screw us over to the Japanese. So you can imagine with the kind of history, the amount of energy and emotions of its time, it's very much embedded in the war and of course in battle box itself. But why is there so much energy though? Well, there's war time. Mm -hmm. and we believe that in the supernatural scene, areas of extreme emotions, and extreme emotions usually is anger or sadness. It lingers in the place. I'm going to test your history. What's Fort Canning known for? history, yeah. <laughs> this hill is called Bukit Larangan. Okay. Does that ring a bell? No. Forbidden hill. A little bit, the forbidden word. Ah, yeah. because back then, before 1819 Raffles arrived here mm -hmm. and he wanted to walk his way up the hill and says it's a very good spot, strategic because I can then see the Singapore River and any incoming incursion the Malays of this place says no, you cannot come up here because it's forbidden Why? The kings are buried here It's a huge burial ground It's a cemetery basically Everywhere And some of the tombs are still available down the, the foot of the hill So, with regards to the battle box mm -hmm. Now, this story came from people who used to work at the Battle Box. So apparently, according to them, things can move in this area. Or you hear footsteps. Or when they will walk to a room and they thought it sounded like someone's inside moving around. But when they get there, no one. 
So BattleBox is closed right now as of time of this recording, but in a couple more weeks, BattleBox will be open. So go check it out. This is Fort Canning Gate. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I love this very spot where we are standing. If you look just at the place around you, the trees, the greenery. This is also the area where I used to sit and try to invite the spirits of Fort Canning up. Because of the history of this place, many people believe there's a lot of wandering spirits that is not just your usual ghost, but a spirit of the past still lingering here. But I thought I saw shadows moving around behind the trees. Later on, wow. I discovered that they're actually nature spirits. They're not spirits of dead soldiers. <laughs> Yeah. I thought you were saying now. Now, <laughs> maybe if you're lucky, you might sense and see something here. Okay, this fort was built in 1860. And why it's built right here is because back then, before all these high-rise buildings were up there, you could see exactly from this point straight down towards the mouth of Singapore River. So it's that side? Yeah, that side. So a place like this with so much history and time, even if there is no tragedy, they tend to have a certain draw and attraction for spirits to this place. So it becomes quite a bit of a nexus here. This place is where we are a bit more, we give more reverence to the spirits. We don't go in and demand that they appear. We understand that there is energy here, there are spiritual beings here, and we are actually moving into their place. So you are a guest in their home today. Have you see seen any sightings? People? Seen sightings here? Yeah. Lots. We have heard stories about Japanese soldiers marching by. Uh, some of the guests were walking towards the building behind this gate. And they saw British soldiers. And they thought, oh, wow, your attraction in Battle Box is so good that you have people dressed up as soldiers walking around. Oh, they thought it was real. Yeah. So when they feed back to the Battle Box guys and says, oh, we love your attraction. They say, oh, thank you very much. Especially to the guys walking around upstairs with oh a uniform. God. They go like, Wait, what? Who? Oh no! <laughs> Behind us, this beautiful building is the Fort Canning Visitor Center. Nothing scary, right? No. Beautiful, yeah. nice lights. Last time, before it became a heritage museum, this was where a lot of events were held. And when there's no events, it's empty. But here's the thing about Fort Canning Center. The kind of haunting that we have in Fort Canning is not your usual spooky, scare you, scare you <laughs> kind of haunting. There's a lot of phantoms here, a lot of apparitions. What people would encounter is sightings of people who don't belong in their group. So maybe a lady in Victorian dress. Mm, like weird, like Just walking random. along the corridor that should not be there. And then she turns the corner and disappears. Oh, or you yeah. find someone in a room and you call out to the person and you turn around actually your friend is there not there or you'll find someone in the toilet in front of the mirror combing her hair and when you blink it's the it's scariest eh? <laughs> someone in the toilet so the other place around this area is up there where the reservoir is places with bodies of water attract spirits for some yeah. reason and you might have heard grandma might have told you seven months don't swim why? Maybe you might, ghosts might pull you in. Is it true? So, yeah, most people believe so. And the people I've spoken to have said that seven months, higher spike in drowning incident. For our next destination, I'm going to bring you to a kramat of the person who founded Mlaka. Oh. What's he doing in Singapore? I'll tell you more. Come, let's go. Okay, let's go. So that is where the kramat is. Oh my, it's so empty. I'm so scared. Can we not go there, please? <laughs> it's a very peaceful place. Don't worry. I'll be there with you. Okay. Hey, there's someone there. Hey. Where? I don't see anyone. Hey, don't laugh. <laughs> that was the age that you see. Do you know about this kramat before this? No. Today? This is not just any kramat. It's a very special kramat. It's a kramat of Iskandar Shah. Sorry, who? <laughs> Iskandar Shah is a very important man or he's also known as Parameswara. He is the last king of Singapore. No? Big no. Nobel? No. Tough, tough crowd. 
Very top gun. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a history about Parameswara slash Iskandar Shah. This is his Kramat. But quite frankly, I think this is more of a makam, which is more grand than just a single plot of tomb. Who's buried in this tomb? We don't really know. It depends on who you ask. If you ask the Malays, this is Iskandar Shah. Inside. Inside. If you ask the Chinese, this is Parameswara. Because Iskandar Shah is not the same person according to the Chinese documentation. <laughs> but they are the same person, right? Well, we don't know. Depends on who you ask. But if we follow in Singapore at least the Malay annals, then Parameswara is Iskandar Shah. But okay. some people also believe that in this tomb is Sang Nila Utama. Huh? You know him, right? Yes. <laughs> so Sang Nila Utama came to this shore in 1299. In 1389, the fifth and final king took over, Parameswara. So it was said that in legend, he had a concubine. And his concubine had an affair. And he was furious. So he stripped her naked and paraded her down the streets. Her father was not too happy with it. So he ran over to the Majapahit Empire, to the king and says, if you come and attack Singapore, I'll open the gates for you. And so they invaded Singapore, and of course, Parameswara was taken by surprise. Instead of staying to fight to the very last man, he decided to flee up north, where he founded Malacca. Oh. So, who lies in this very tomb today? The answer? No one. It is believed that he died in Malacca in 1414. He was buried somewhere there. He did not come back to Singapore. So this crypt or this tomb is currently empty. That did not deter people from still coming here for supernatural reasons. But it's not the kind of hantu variant that you are used to, okay? <laughs> yeah. And that's the reason why we don't carry our EMF meter here today. You've got to be respectful of this place. People will come here, practitioners of Silat, who will come here and meditate because they feel there's a lot of strong energy in this place. So what we're going to do is put you here alone. Ready? Come. Okay, so in your mind, remember we want to be respectful here and venerate a rather important person. So it's not to call him out, not to make demands. You are mortal, he is spirit after all. It's for you to just open your senses and allow any message or, or information to be downloaded inside your mind. Okay? So you got to remove fear, remove doubt, remove all these thoughts in your head and keep your mind extremely still and clear. Ken, I'll come back and check on you in about an hour. Huh? Actually, wait, can you don't go? Can you come back? Can you come back, please? <laughs> How do you feel? Mm, actually, surprisingly, I felt quite at peace. Mm -hmm. There was nothing disturbing me. Did you hear footsteps approaching you? Yeah, you right. <laughs> I guess in the beginning, I felt a bit scared. Why? I mean, how how often do you sit in front of like a like a shrine, you know, and just meditate and close your eyes? Is this your first time? Yeah. Of well course, done. I'm so scared of that. New experience for you. Yeah. No, but I have a question though. Sure. Like, I see joysticks around. Hmm. So people actually pray here. It's a bit controversial. Yeah, because there's joysticks on the shrine. Mm -hmm. See, in the 1300s, mm -hmm. before Islam came to Malacca, the Malays were practicing a lot of animalistic uh, practices or customs. And joystick is not forbidden back then. Only after the 1400s, 1414, and then a lot of practices of the past were put aside. But some Malays still do give joysticks. As of now? Hush hush. It's not allowed um, okay. by the religion, mm. by customs and tradition. Yeah. So it's, it's a very fine line. Then the Chinese would come here and pay respects to their ancestors with joystick. 
So for Christian, I suppose, yeah, right? Catholic. What Catholic, right? What we would do when we come here is to observe, be respectful, yeah. and give thanks, or, or just give good vibes out, give blessings. Perhaps maybe that explains why this karma is full of good energy and not bad ones. Oh, okay. Should I tell you that instead? I think you wouldn't be scared anymore. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you ready to go? Yes, of course. <laughs> Let's take a walk down the hill. And now that we're back in the safety of our studio, Marianne, share with me the experience for tonight. I think it was very peaceful in Fort Canning. Like, I, haven't, I didn't feel any off vibes. I used to think that Fort Canning was very scary. But I think after that, I felt a bit at peace. Ah, so knowing the history of Fort Canning re removes the fear for you? A little bit. I was still a bit scared. <laughs> okay, so before I told you about the Kramat, if I were to say I'm going to bring you to a tomb or a grave, how would you have reacted? Like any normal person would, right? <laughs> they would be so scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, I don't know, maybe there was, there's something inside. Like, it's like the remains of the, the dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was a bit scared. But I think now it's okay. When you sat there, because you were afraid, right? And mm -hmm. then, you know, I left you there. You were like, oh, don't go, don't go. And then eventually you come down and you close your eyes. And you were there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? In the beginning, I was a bit scared. I couldn't really properly close my eyes and really feel at peace. But I think after a while, um, my producer told me that he was there and not to be scared. So I felt a bit more at ease. But then at the end, towards the end, I felt that smell. And I was like, maybe it's just my mosquito repellent. I was trying to psych myself to thinking that maybe it's not it. What I kind sure. of flowery smell? Because you were with me the whole night and the Kramat was the very last stop. So if it was your mosquito repellent, you would have smelled that like hours before. Yeah, it was this jasmine smell. And I know that jasmine has like a thing with um with you can the, smell spirits, right? Okay. Is it? Which, yeah. which kind of entity is associated with that flowery smell? I'm not sure. Contena? <gasps> is it? I don't know. We're not is supposed it? to say the word. And that's one of the taboos, right? Like old people would tell the younger generation, if you spot something, you smell something weird, you see something that's not supposed to be there, you don't talk about it until the next morning. What would be your takeaway for today? I think not everywhere in Singapore is haunted. You know, like some spirits are just there to be there because they, 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 they used to live there before us. Mm. So we are just visiting their home and as long as you be respectful, they're not going to hurt you or harm you. So the next time when you bring your boyfriend there, I want you to do something for me. Leave him in the Kramat. Leave him in the Kramat. <laughs> Well, you could do that now that you know the history of the place. You could be the tour guide, bring him there, get him sit there and let him squeal like a little girl. Will you stand far away and go like, yeah, I know the history of this place now. <laughs> well, for this episode of Haunting History, my name is Eugene Tay and this is my guest, Marianne, saying once you know the history of the place, it reduces the fear because now you tend to appreciate the supernatural in a lot more ways. Good night, everyone. Because that was the lamppost I had my very first kiss. I thought she kissed you first. Hmm? She kissed you first. I mean, the kiss got to be at the same time. Long. I think if I stay here, she'll keep calling me back. That's fine. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye! <laughs>